Um, Yesang Tsutim is a Tibetan intellectual, and uh, in 2000 and <coughs> 2009, he made a video, a video appeal to the Tibetan people, and he actually made the, his appeal uh, really comprehensive and detailed, and in the course of speaking on the video, uh, the, he explains that the reason he wanted to make that video appeal was because he wanted to reach all the Tibetans in every nook and corner of Tibet. Usually he's a writer and he would have written an article or an essay. Uh, he's also written a couple of books. But he wanted to make sure that all the Tibetans, even including the number of Tibetans who are illiterate, who cannot read and write, they have a chance to listen to his message. So he made this video. And you can actually go to Tibet Online TV uh, to watch the whole length of the video. Everyone has the responsibility to talk about right and wrong. If one is a Lama, then he has the duty to tell the truth. And if one works for the government, then he must speak the truth because his salary is tiny compared to all the sacrifice people are making. If the Tibetan students know that the education system in China does not provide them the necessary qualifications, they can boycott by not attending classes. Likewise, Tibetans must stop using Chinese clothes and stop eating Chinese food. We do not hate the Chinese people, but we respect truth and justice. We are against communist China's rule. Premier Wen Jiabao said that China respects truth and facts. If this is so, then why is that I as a Tibetan do not have freedom to learn my language, promote my culture, and practice my religion? This is why lamas, monks, government officials, students, and all other lay and monastic people must engage in civil disobedience by boycotting in all their respective works. Is it possible to boycott in all activities? The fact is that all the patriots who march forward ready to sacrifice their lives to do so for Tibet and the Tibetans and never for any personal gain. If they can sacrifice their lives for Tibet, then we can certainly boycott in our works. And I want to note that this actually marks a very uh, watershed, significant watershed kind of moment in Tibetan history. And in now going beyond simply expressing that the Chinese government is inflicting suffering on us, it takes a lot of courage in Tibet to actually say that, to speak out the truth. But what he's doing here is even going beyond that and suggesting a way forward. And this is what's happening in the Tibetan movement right now people from inside Tibet writing and speaking out. Many of them are showing the way forward by talking about strategic nonviolent force that we can build through civil disobedience and non-cooperation movement.